What's up, squadron? Aviation has given me a ton of amazing experience. Good, good job there. Nice rock, high wing. <laughs> but more importantly, it's introduced me to a whole new family of friends. Like, dude, you're killing it. You're having a great day. So I just never give up. Airport, and then, oh, by the way, I got car ice while I was flying through, so the engine started running rough. And I had to Join us tonight as we're clear direct for some hangar flying. I am Brian Dabrowski, and this is Super Aero Live. I'm so loud. I don't know. I'm even loud. What's up, Av Geeks? Oh, my mic's too hot again. I'm blowing out your speakers with my enthusiasm. It is Wednesday, which can only mean one thing. It's time for another episode of Super Arrow Live. And I'm going to get to our guest in just a second. But I got to say hi to all of you guys and gals in the chat. Gary Smith's here. Parody Show's here. I think Parody Show, you're overseas. I looked at your YouTube channel. You're like in Brazil or something? Someplace not here. And thank you so much for chiming in or tuning in remotely. Jonathan's here. Connie's here tonight. Outinside's here. Zach Sherman. Jason. Waukesha Pilot. The intrepid and and vivacious Waukesha Pilot is here. Clayton's here. Uh, the, the gang is all here. And by the way, a lot of those names you just heard are members of the Super Aero Squadron. They support the show on Patreon. We're going to do a Zoom call after the show, a little after party. Although, if you're watching and you're in the squadron, uh, Zoom isn't working quite right. I'll get the link to you as soon as I can after the show. We'll get it figured out. All right. I want to talk to you about the amazingness of Instagram. On Instagram, one day, I was fantasizing about owning an RV8. So I typed in hashtag RV8. Bingo, bango. Got this beautiful video of air-to-air footage of an RV8 flying. And I said, wow, who's doing that? And it's this person. I'm going to introduce to you right now. It's Christina Delp. Did I pronounce that right? Delp? You did, yeah. I don't know. I was. You could be like, it's Delp or something. I'm glad uh, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Um, hey, Plain Lady. Hey, hey, Ty, uh, Tyler's here as well. So here's the deal. Uh, tonight is going to be, we're going to talk about airplanes tonight. And we're going to talk about cameras and filmmaking. So as the folks at No Home and Christina, you and I were talking just a minute ago before the start of the show. Uh I work in the film industry, you work in the film industry, and you are what's called, we abbreviate abbreviate it to DP in the industry, in the biz, but um, that stands for director of photography, so you're the person, well, I I won't spoil it, you tell me what that job is for the viewers at home, because I think then they'll understand what you do with all the cool plane footage we're going to see in a minute. Yeah, sure. So a director of photography is basically uh, the head of the camera department, the lighting department, and it's kind of working in collaboration with crew beneath you to uh, execute the vision of a director on a project um, to whatever they want. And it's really controlling the look, um, the camera, the lenses, the lights, kind of all of that. It's, uh, It's a lot to keep track of, but it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and there's a lot resting on your shoulders a uh, little fact for folks watching another dp that's been on the show is eric hayes aka socal flying monkey uh he's a dp in la so that so there's a thing there's must be something with aviation and and dps or directors of photography before we get too far <laughs> i'm sorry i'm looking at the chat and people are <laughs> joking around um before we get too far in I want to show everyone what excited me so much. Your work is, oh, Zach Sherman's asking film term questions. Let's throw it up here. Zach Sherman says, is it first AC who pulls focus? Yeah, that's one of the things they do. And and also get you coffee. Not usually them, usually a PA probably. <laughs> <laughs> they take the coffee from the PA and hand it to you. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then they, they also change your lenses Make everything Change clean. lenses, keep track of media, batteries, all that sort of stuff. I realized I'm kind of like off kilter here. I'm going to shift over. Where's my DP? All right. So let me show you 
let me show everyone <laughs> this amazing air-to-air -air reel that you have put together. It's It blew my mind, and that's why I had to have you on the show to talk about how you make this stuff happen. First of all, that track, never mind the shots, I was jamming to that track. So thanks for it. Yeah. That was a sweet track. Uh, so many compliments in the chat. I just want to I want to talk about uh, Alicia, just fire emojis. I agree, Alicia. Bender Aviation, damn. Uh, Connie McCorkle says she likes the city shot. That's, there was a couple That's a of That's a big favorite, city. yeah. Yeah, that's super beautiful. Uh, 72 Papa, RV72 Papa, he has uh, RV6. This is, boy, I'd love to have a video like that of my RV. Here's the thing. Uh, 72 Papa, I could, we could do, the two of us, have your people call my people. And he's actually <laughs> a member of the squadron. After the show, let's talk about, we can make that happen. Christina will come out with her crew. I'll produce it. And we'll just make we'll make a beautiful v a film about you and your RV. Uh, lots of other love here. Uh, Bender Aviation says I could watch these shots all day. Yeah, for real. I literally did one day, just like on loop. <laughs> like, and then also a quick shout out. Um, Bobby Kurt uh, says these shots are awesome. Bobby, uh, I believe we're gonna find out in a second. Flies a similar aircraft to your air to air. Uh, platform so we're gonna find out about that it's like so bobby stick around uh lots of everybody really really loving it um so let's talk a little bit about how i'm trying to think of how to to organize this conversation uh maybe we should start with with keep people on the edge of their seats for a second talk to me a little bit about how you got into this and then we can talk about how you actually do it and then maybe we can i can flip back and forth between like some behind the scenes stuff and some shots of the of the planes. But how did it all start for you? I mean, this is like, this is pretty amazing. How, yeah, how did it, I mean, it started a while ago. My dad is a, is a pilot and he has been since I was little. Uh, he's been a pilot since he was, I don't know, 15, I believe. Um, so I've pretty much grown up around aviation my whole life. Um, and I didn't really start getting into it more until probably middle school. Um, so I started flying more at that point. Um, and then I didn't get into photography and filmmaking really until college. Um, and at that point I had like a DSLR or something. And uh, we started doing some small videos with DSLR footage and GoPro footage um, with like our family's, what was it called? An Aventura 2, I think. It's just an amphib uh, experimental flying yeah. around on lakes and stuff. 
cool. um, which That's is a, cool a lot plane. of fun. Yeah, so those were the first two uh, videos I ever did um, for planes, and uh, that was a while ago. That was, I think, in like 2016, I believe. Um, and then in 2017, the fall of 2017, um, my dad got his small M5, purchased it in uh, Anchorage, so we flew all the way out to Anchorage commercially and then flew the mall all the way back to Connecticut, which was a lot of hours. I think it was like 34, 36 hours of flying. Um, took a little over three days, I think. Uh, but I did like a photography, a film photography project during that trip, which was super awesome. So I have a lot of cool uh, black and white film photos from from that trip. Um, and that it. sort of got me back into uh, back into taking pictures and stuff of uh, of planes, which was, I think, my last year of college. Um, and then I really started getting into filmmaking more. Um, I majored in media production. Um, and then I think it was 2019. It, we uh, won a filmmaking contest, and I ended up winning uh, the gimbal we use from that. Um, and I think one day my dad was just like, "Oh, we should try this." try this out with the plane um and i didn't really know what he meant by that at first like just getting landscapes or something <laughs> but uh <laughs> it kind of evolved into what it is now um took a lot of testing and 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 whatnot to get to where we are now but yeah it's been a, a fun journey so so i think that's because we barely have talked uh that's the most striking part of this like you're pretty new at this and your stuff, folks, I'm going to tell you at home, normally someone newer to this does not have a reel that looks that sharp. Like, it takes a long time. Like, there's a, there's a little bit of a a phenom thing happening. Not the airplane, but the a phenom. Where, where are you? You're over here. Like, that is pretty rare to have something that beautiful uh, that quickly. Like, I know, I know guys who've been... Uh, working on their reels for like two decades and it doesn't look that nice. Not trying to like pump you up too much, but I it's I appreciate beautiful. the it's kind beautiful. words, but yeah. <laughs> uh, let's talk about, so so let's talk about, um, I'm going to pull up this, you sent me some behind the scenes footage because you, you mentioned the gimbal, mm -hmm. so maybe that's a good transition. So here yeah. here's the RV shot that got me connected to you. Uh, and I'm putting that up there for 72 Papa because he said he only clicked because in the chat he said he only clicked because of the uh, the RV thumbnail today. But let me pull up this behind the scenes stuff. I think it's this one. Oh, I got to turn this other one off. There we go. So this is um, talk us through this footage that we're seeing right now. Sure. So this was uh, not that long ago. I think this was last fall. This was with the uh, the 195. Um, and so we take both of the doors off there, the uh, the main observation door and then the back like luggage compartment door so we can get a better field of view. Um, and here you can see how the gimbal is basically set up in the back seat and that's my view uh, through a monitor, um, which I control the gimbal using a PS4 controller basically uh, is how it all works. Um, so usually we have the doors off, this this one with the jet prop and this one with the archer was during the winter, so it would uh, have been a little chilly if we took all the doors off, but that's a better look at, at how it looks from the outside. Um, but yeah, the gimbal is what takes out all of the, the vibrations and the shakes. Um, it definitely looks better when it's not bumpy at all because you can really see it with the other plane making making adjustments and, and feeling out the bumps. Um, but yeah, when it's really smooth, it, it looks really smooth. And oftentimes I'm even tricked into thinking that it's in slow motion. It just looks smooth enough to be in slow motion. For the for the nerds like me at home, like what gimbal is that? Yeah, so that's a Freefly Movi Pro. Um, oh, right And on. the camera on there is a Ursa Mini Pro, which I don't have anymore. Um, so now I use a Pocket 6K. Um, and I usually stay on a 50 millimeter lens. It kind of seems like the sweet spot um, to get close enough. Um, when people are good at flying information, we can get pretty tight um, and then get some nice wides if we if we back off a little bit. Oh, so you're shooting it on a prime the whole time. Yep, this, everything on there has been on a 50 millimeter lens. Whoa, that that blows my mind a little bit. 
I always I always assumed that it would be like you know you'd have like this mega zoom, like people put on like cineflexes and stuff. Yeah, no, it'd definitely be easier to use a zoom, um, but it just wouldn't bounce very nicely. And I haven't had I actually just got zoom lenses, so I haven't had the chance to use them yet or balance it on there yet. But it's uh, if it's doable with a fifty millimeter lens, I definitely can't wait to try out a zoom lens for sure. And it's weird because I don't know if there's like, I don't know, talk people. One of the questions that just came up was Marty was asking about the gimbal some more. He says, does the gimbal somehow auto track? Or are you having to always adjust tracking? Yeah, so I'm always adjusting the tracking with the PS4 controller, um, which definitely took a lot of testing, like I said, in practice. Um, at first, there's this antenna on the, the movie part that attaches to the PS4 controller, um, and it basically was overloading the gimbal sensor because we were so cl- I'm sitting right next to it um, and eventually we took that off and I didn't have any issues with it anymore um, so yeah I'm tracking with it and the the like method I use is I'm always watching the tail number and trying to get the least amount of motion blur with that and it's always easier to see with the tail numbers uh, on the monitor and then the other thing that maybe for folks at home are you are you there was a shot that um had the i what we in the, what we call a follow focus it's a device that for folks at home i'm going to i'm going to flex a little i know things too christina <laughs> uh where you 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 can remotely control the focus is what the ac would be using i mean do you have an ac with you or are you pulling focus at the same time like how does that work right so i've done a few with people pulling focus and then there were some times where i was doing it also but eventually at some point it was probably the fall of last year that I figured out if I just stopped down instead of using as much ND, it A, looks better, and also I don't have to pull focus, which makes life a lot easier. <laughs> oh, so you have a bigger depth of field, so you can kind of... Yeah. Rock on. Hashtag science. Uh, Marty is out asking a follow-up question. He says, is a PS4 controller a camera thing, or is it literally a game controller from a PlayStation 4? Yeah, it's literally a PlayStation 4 controller that's plugged into what's called a, a Mimic. So that's what's connected to to the gimbal itself, um, connected to a wire to the PS4 controller. So I'm using the PS4 controller, which is definitely not the most accurate. Um, it gets pretty, it's very sensitive as to what you're doing versus like a more in-depth like movie controller, um, but it gets the job done, so that's this is the device i was talking about we were talking about in terms of focus pulling if you need to do that it's it's cool now that they're like radios i'm old enough to have needed them to be like uh they used to have a thing called showing my age they would have a thing called a whip and so you'd have like basically like a a flexible rod that would go to the camera with some gears to turn the le- the focus ring on the lens and then it would be like this long kind of flexible thing so you'd have a guy or a gal like you know a couple feet away like turning this thing and like squinting like is it what number is it like so anyway it's cool that they're all like remote you got to charge a lot more batteries yeah. but yeah um Anyway, that so cool. I mean, what about the um So obviously you're doing this right now with with your dad in in the mall. Like are you what sort of pre-planning goes into a formation flight like this? Yeah, so we kind of have come up with a system at least on our side of what sort of shots we're going to get and what time of day and all of that stuff. Um, my dad usually just meets with the pilot, bef- the other pilot beforehand, um, whether it's over phone or in person, um, and kind of goes over the way we do it. Um, and it depends on, I guess, the skill level of the other pilot, kind of who's the one leading the formation versus the one doing the moves. Um, but, for example, the Globe Swift, he's done a lot of formation work, so we were able to get a lot more interesting moves and get pretty close up, um, get some tight shots as well. Um, but yeah, we basically discuss where we want to go for background, um, which we do a lot over where there's not as many houses or over Long Island Sound, cause that's kind of another big spot, um, close to where we're based out of. Um, 
And so we kind of choose the spot, choose the time, and we're always aiming for either early in the morning um, or later in the evening, close to golden hour, just because it always looks better, especially no clouds. That never looks good. Um, and yeah, we base it around the time, the location, and then just kind of get in the air, meet up, and start moving through the, the like shot list, essentially. Um, and we've come up with several moves we try to get through um, that keeps it interesting and gives some variation versus just flying alongside each other for the whole time. And what, I just realized I let this thing stop. Let me play, let me play, let's talk about that a little bit. Let me play this reel again. I mean, talk to us a little bit about, if you want me to pause on something too, let me know. Like, talk to us a little bit about the kinds of, angles that you found i mean because i've shot a little bit of air to air i didn't have a gimbal i was just shooting kind of like backwards over my shoulder out mm-hmm. of a j3 cub to another j3 cub and it was difficult one but two very quickly became like oh this all looks the same yeah yeah so a big a big thing is trying to figure out what sort of moves you like and angles you like so for example this tbm um we were doing a lot of side to side bank like smooth shallow banking in and out same thing with the 195 here um oh sorry i went back i went back to try to show it again but anyway (laughs) keep talking yeah so we do a lot of like slower movements smoother movements where it's either banking in and out towards us like that or pitching up and down pretty smooth is usually one of my favorite ones um usually looks that one reminds me the most of like a jib shot on a car commercial or something um so you can see here with the the bear hawk as well kind of moving in and out um the same thing with this uh the more motion you can get and the more like dynamic angles and movements it just looks way more interesting than than flying alongside each other for 40 minutes of footage yeah and i think that's what caught catch caught my eye in the you the way you described it just now and again we're doing a lot of like a lot of like film nerd things right now but like talking about like the idea of like a jib arm or thinking about like how the camera can like rotate in space around the subject uh, i think is a real different differentiator there do you have a favorite these like steeper banking like camera angle favorite oh no say what you're gonna say first because it's probably more interesting than what i was asking yeah, so, like, these sort of moves where the archer is going under there, like, that's probably one of my favorite moves. It just looks really cool if I can track it well enough, because um, it does pick up speed really quickly. So um, trying to find the right pacing for moves and, and making sure everything's staying in frame um, and kind of, especially if it's bumpy and it's windy and loud, it gets pretty crazy um, at some points. But getting those moves where we're getting banks, like this one with the the piper that um like that angle is usually my favorite like banking in towards the plane um in towards us i guess uh and then the lighting is really another big part of it um i usually tend to backlight more um because it gives the lines a lot more interesting shape in my opinion and we do some front lighting my dad prefers the front lighting because you can see the colors on the paint um easier um so we try to get both of those as well um just because it adds again more variation along with the variation in shot angles um and depending on the angle of the sun you can also get the like the prop to show up really nicely um so just trying to get the biggest variation in the the amount of time that you're shooting is pretty much the goal we we aim for every time do you so i had to so you t- you answer the question about your favorite kind of camera moves and stuff what about like are there is there one of these photo missions your favorite? Um, I really like the uh, the jet prop the the one that's over Long Island Sound. Um, I just think the the color palette of the plane um, and the like way the the sun was hitting the water looks really like that that one. Um, it's probably yeah. my favorite. The Cirrus is pretty cool looking too. The RV was the only one on here that's done uh, handheld, so I had to throw a decent amount of stabilization on in post to get it to look (laughs) semi-stabilized, like the gimbal stuff. Oh, dude, that it worked. You must have steady hands because that doesn't fix everything. Little little (laughs) warp warp stabilize. Yeah, yeah, lots of warp (laughs) stabilize. (laughs) Uh, I want to. Some folks are asking some questions in here real quick. Um, Let's see, folks. 
Oh, uh, Bobby's asking about some. You had some shots from inside the cockpit. He's asking, were those shot on the pocket as well? Um, the ones in the cockpit. I think that was on the Ursa Mini Pro. That was for an actual commercial. Uh, well, some of them were for commercial. The one in the in the C forty seven was just shooting for. I think it was D Day Squadron. Um, just doing some B roll stuff for them. And then the other one that looks a little more polished and lit was for a commercial for Randolph Engineering. Yeah, that and and the other thing is like not that. I want to make, make clear to everyone: you're gonna buy, you're gonna go, you're gonna do that, you're gonna watch this show, and you're gonna buy a camera, and then all your stuff's gonna look like garbage because you're not Christina. Uh, it's really easy to make <laughs> something look bad with a really expensive camera. Uh, some folks in here separately are asking if you would uh, come shoot air-to-air footage of their planes. So if you're serious about that, everybody, like, shoot me a note, and I will we'll get everybody connected. Um, Marty's got a question here. He said, any requirements for pilots to have air... Whoa, that didn't show up very well on the screen. Uh, let me stretch... Oh, that's make I'm making it worse. Okay, we're just going to leave it alone. Uh, any requirements for pilots to have air-to-air training before you shoot them? Seems like you'd want to know the target plane isn't going to be flown erratically. Yeah, so my dad will chat with the pilot and kind of see if they have any formation experience, more or less, um, and kind of base it off of that. So if if a pilot hasn't done a lot of formation flying, my dad will basically have them fly on a certain heading at a certain altitude at a certain speed and will be the ones moving around them to get our usual camera movements. Um, so it's just kind of flipping in reverse, um, which some of the pilots haven't done as much formation in this, but we still manage to get the same type of shots. Um, and from my perspective on the monitor, I always assume that they're the ones moving too. I really can't tell that it's my dad that's moving our plane versus them moving their plane. Which is like a, a crazy direct analog to the jib analogy you made before, right? Where when we're on set, right, like you've got the whatever the subject is and you might have well now a lot of people use drones but jib arms are super fun i have a buddy who's got like a 40 foot one right and you got the camera on this arm that's like you know moving around i don't know this is a weird pantomime to do (laughs) but like um anyway uh question from nick moore about all this he said do you use radio comms or hand signals for positioning um, yeah, usually my dad is the one who's communicating on whatever channel we say beforehand, um, and I'll kind of talk to him what what I'm looking to do next or what we're missing, basically, and he'll kind of, because we've done it so many times now, he'll know what I'm talking about and just kind of explain it in pilot terms to them how to kind of execute the move we're looking to do. Right, so you guys have, and you've, and you've briefed it ahead of time, you mentioned, right? So you've got your, like, shot list the pilots have briefed the order in which this is all going to go down. And then are you doing things like saying like, Oh, like, you know, back 10 or right. Like just to help get him into frame. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we will. If it's like tricky getting in a tighter shot where it's like, Oh, they're kind of falling behind and I'm starting to see the, the horizontal stave, then it's like, Oh, we need to move forward a bit. Um, but for the most part, I, I definitely don't do any hand signals because it's kind of hard to see past past the gimbal anyway yeah you're um, behind like this cage of yeah. metal and stuff <laughs> yeah um so i definitely don't do hand signals but we sometimes will do do like the 20 feet ahead 20 feet up that sort of thing um but for the most part it's just kind of walking through the moves and uh and following them as best assuming kind of what they're gonna do is is where the guesswork comes in for operating and that's when it gets tough especially when it's bumpy as well to kind of follow them and track them especially when it's uh when it's much tighter it's hard to keep everything in in the frame without the wings going out off off the frame lines sure i mean is this the kind of thing where obviously you guys have this the mall is kind of like a perfect camera platform for for now are there other are you guys talking about upgrading your is it in a in six months are you gonna be like in a two ten? Are you gonna get like a B twenty five so you can shoot out the back t- gunner position or like how? Yeah, how mu- that would be lovely. Uh, but no, we've <laughs> talked about using, I think like 
I can't remember, like a Bonanza or something like that for for faster planes, but we haven't really been asked or been able to do anything that's faster than like the TBM or the the jet prop yet. So that's kind of just on the the edge because they'll be putting flaps in sometimes and you can kind of even see in the jet prop video he's sort of like sinking into into the Mm. movements a little bit and we're at like the top end of our of our speed so those sort of planes get hard to match up and we're definitely pushing it um and they're kind of slow uh so that's like the extent at which we can kind of operate at right now but yeah i'd love to do some some bigger planes for sure i mean that's pretty big we were in another C-47. That one was handheld also. Oh, see? I knew there was going to be a secret to that one. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm, I'm checking other questions. Everyone's super fascinated by this. I am too, but I'm, I'm glad everyone else is because I was worried that you and I were just going to nerd out like real hard as like filmmakers, and then there wouldn't be any airplanes. That's what happened when uh, Dan Milliken from Taking Off He's a, a producer, director as well. And he and I just ended up talking about like film stock all night. But everyone yeah. stuck around. Um, so uh, let's see. Let's ask some. We'll do some more. Uh, oh, Gary Smith says, real professional. Ha <laughs> ha, real good buddy. Uh, Plain Lady is wondering about the. And she mentioned she might be serious about having you come down. Um, favorite project you've worked on thus far in your career? Probably the the Randolph one, because that was the first, like, actual project I was able to use my air-to-air on, which we did last October, I believe. Um, And that was fun, because I also got to do more of my, like, normal DP work, where it was lighting for people and scenes, um, and then connecting it with with air-to-air as well, which is um, super exciting to connect it to, like, a real-world job, Um, because most of the other stuff has just been kind of for fun working with people my dad knows, um, which has been really good for practice because it definitely takes a long time to get adjusted to everything. Um, but yeah, the Randolph engineering piece, which in, in the reel is some of the shots where you can see the guys wearing glasses, like those push-in shots. Um, those were definitely from that commercial as well. It's like uh, this this stuff. Yeah, so that's all done on the ground. We had basically a big... HMI that we were moving around on wheels to make it look like they were banking. Um, So that was a fun challenge to kind of match the the air-to-air stuff, which we squeezed that air-to-air in like literally the last half an hour we could possibly do it for this project because it had a due date and the weather was not cooperating. So I want to translate some of what you said. You said like we have a big HMI and HMI is is a giant light uh, well, they come in various sizes, but typically, like, a big light that, um, as opposed to, like, the LEDs, you could probably actually explain this better than I could, <laughs> like, the LED, like, this this show is lit with, like, LEDs, right? Well, an HMI is, like, one of those lights that can still get hot, right? Like, it could still actually, like, hurt you and burn you, and so what I'm imagining you described is, well, you should just describe it. But, like, a big light on a stand and someone's physically moving this giant light around? Yeah. So we were on on the ground in in Groton um, on their tarmac out there. And uh, we had the the TBM set out and I had them position it in the way the sun was hitting. Um, So it was already light outside, but the the HMI was uh, an M18, so it was an 1800-watt light. And uh, basically it was on a wheel stand and I had... I had a grip kind of move it back and forth super smooth um, and it just replicates basically any banking shots we were going to get in the air to air, which we shot like a month later um, after, after shooting off this ground stuff. Rock on, rock on Uh, more questions, dude, everyone, no one, no guest has anybody asking this many questions. Uh, Everyone's usually just making fun of me for, like burping on mic or something. Uh, Nick Moore wants. Well, let's go to this one. Marty wants to know. Sorry, Nick. Marty wants to know uh, about if you have any interest in learning to fly now that you've you've been exposed to this this epic trip. By the way, that epic trip, like all the way out to Alaska and back. That's insane. That's super cool. That's a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, yeah. That was the most amazing 
amazing trip I could have ever done. I wish we had more more time out there to kind of fly along along the mountains and the Rockies and everything, but snow was starting to come in. It was like late September into October. So out there, it's definitely getting pretty chilly. Um, so we were kind of racing the clock back home at that point, but we were flying along mountains for most part. And then until we got to like North Dakota and onto Connecticut, it was, uh, it was a little bit of a drag, I have to say. But yeah, I... I have done some flying. I've done some training through Civil Air Patrol, and I've done some flying in gliders. Um, but I don't have my license yet. Hopefully, I'll have the time to do it at some point, and I definitely am interested in it. Um, but I do enjoy also just flying with my dad and riding around, doing cool stuff, going camping, um, doing the air-to-air -air stuff. But yeah, hopefully someday. Nick's question that I that I punted on was and bobby has this question as well they're asking about color grading are you doing that grading yourself or is that you work with a colorist yeah so everything on here i've colored except for the randolph commercial which had a professional colorist on that project i'm going to show it again because it's so pretty um yeah and it's so funny like you guys have no idea uh what it's like to be in a color suite and pe they're like this one do you like a little more magenta or a little less magenta and you're like i don't see a difference they are the same it's like going to the optometrist option one option two <laughs> option yeah, one yeah so this stuff was two. colored by by a colorist he actually does the the stuff for snl like their short films that's awesome that's super cool by the way uh socal flying monkey Eric, uh, SoCal Flying Monkey, just tuned in. He says he's watching while driving. What could go wrong? Uh, that's a guy you need to get connected with. Uh, super, super amazing dude. You, we've got to get you guys talking to each other about, about cinema. Uh, okay, so what's the like? What's the the Christina story next? Like. Obviously, you've got this amazing reel. You're doing professional work in aerial videography. You separately, uh, people can go. I think I've got the link in the bio or the bio, the description, the doobly do, whatever. Um, I've got a link down there to like your commercial site, right? People can actually go see the other work you've done professionally. What's the next career move? I mean, you're already doing beautiful work. You're already shooting commercial work. What's what's next for you? Yeah, so I, I definitely am looking to get into some narrative work at some point because I do enjoy doing that a lot. Um, but on the other hand, I, I really want to keep working in this kind of commercial space um, and actually getting to work with like clients on actual projects um, for brands, companies um, to do air to air and kind of have whole commercials like the Randolph one where it's not just air to air, but it's connected with with other scenes. So it's kind of using all of the tools I've, I've learned over the past few years. Um, and whether that be airplanes and aviation, but also going into, into like the car world as well for that sort of commercial work, it kind of is similar in ways, um, like car to car versus air to air. Yeah. And the, and the, the, um, it's so hard to get, like, I feel like, uh, this is something, so my, I, I've got a production company now, uh, it's called Ski Team, and my business partner and I are talking about how, what we think the, like, industry's doing, like, in terms of, like, oh, like, is it going to be high budget, is it going to be low budget, like, where do we fit into that mix, and separately, like, how can we help now, right, like, we, as we grow as a, as a new company, even though we're very experienced in the industry, and she was like, you know, like, I don't know if we need to work with agencies, let's just go do this other stuff that's just as lucrative, and whatever and I was like nah but like I kind of still want to do the agency work and she's like why is it because I haven't done a helicopter shoot yet I want to like knock that out. I haven't done uh one of my buddies used to work uh on Porsche he was an agency producer that did all the work the agency that did all this for Porsche and he'd shoot me pictures and he'd be like oh yeah here we are with like the supercharged Porsche with a giant camera jib on the top for its company called Pursuit you can look uh, Pursuit mm -hmm. has an aviation division, actually. Um, they do. Uh, they got the jet. Oh, we should get you in the Pursuit. I don't know how. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get you in the... You're going to get to ride in the back of the... We're going to do it. I don't know how. I don't That'd know how I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll make that happen. Um, 
Anyway, uh, folks are asking. Oh, here I gotta do. Since SoCal Flying Monkey just tuned in, I want to make sure he can see your reel. So <laughs> I'm gonna click back to your reel. <laughs> but so folks are asking also. Um, do you do just videos, or are you also a stills photographer in addition to a, a DP? Um, I used to do more still photography than I do now. Um, it's kind of more a, of a for fun thing now than for work. Um, and it's a good way to kind of get re-inspired when video kind of gets to be kind of boring at some points, especially during like repetitive corporate work. Um, photography is a super fun way to kind of get back into why it's enjoyable in the first place. But yeah, I don't do it professionally or for work um, as much as I used to. But you shot uh, some stuff on film, which makes you an okay person. <laughs> Uh, Nick Moore says, air to air with actual scenery in the background. What a concept. <laughs> uh, I wish we had more mountains around here. I will say that whenever I see, uh, see the pictures from Alaska, all I wish is that we could go do air to air out there. Cause that's like the best of both worlds. Yeah. I mean, I have nothing like that. Oh, I just, I just totally blasted everyone's ears by being excited. Um, I, we have nothing like that in Wisconsin. It's just all cornfields and stuff. SoCal says your reel looks awesome. But he shouldn't look at it. He just realized he shouldn't look at it because he's driving. So stop looking. <laughs> stop looking at it. Yeah. Be careful. Uh, okay. Bobby wants to know, would you do shoots for films or series? Or just are you looking to just stick with commercials? Um, commercials is really the, the way to make money professionally <laughs> right now. So that's kind of, kind of the main, main projects I'm looking to do, but then to kind of go into narrative on the side as well, just cause it's the reason why I started doing this in the first place. I was a big fan of movies, watched a lot of movies all of the time. And I was basically like, oh, well, everyone says to do, uh, to do something you love. Um, and I loved movies. And so I looked up what jobs are in the film industry because I didn't even know really anything about the film industry. Um, and like DP was one of them and I saw that it involved the camera um, and had the word photography in it, which I had been doing photography at that point. So I was like, oh, I'll choose this one. Um, and that's kind of where it all started um, based off of watching movies all of the time. So that's that's like the end goal, I guess, is to, to get into narrative, hopefully on a bigger scale. But it's definitely a a limited amount of space is available for that to to make money on yeah for sure i mean that's the 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 like classic thing right like after college i went to i came to milwaukee started working in the commercial production uh industry here and definitely like I, i've worked a couple films in my career it's like they don't come through wisconsin very often but i i've been lucky enough to do a handful uh and my you know one of my buddies uh who now is like kind of a big deal out there uh working on some big series and stuff but like he went out to la and i remember to put in perspective for people like i was working as a production assistant making like 150 200 a day which is like good money especially considering you're just like cleaning up trash and getting people <laughs> coffee he went out to la and he was like working on like a star trek movie and making 60 bucks a day or something like that so the money in the is in the commercials for sure. Um, so I think I, I get it. I totally get, uh, especially if you've got like all this camera gear, you've got a fund to grow as an artist and a, and a, a, a DP. Um, quick question from a couple of folks. We, I, and no answer if you're comfortable. Are you, what is your home airport? Would you be comfortable sharing where you guys are flying out of? Yeah, so we live in Western Connecticut, and we're based out of KOXC, so that's Waterbury, Oxford. Um, we live pretty close to there. Rock on. Very cool. Uh, Brad, hello, welcome. Uh, let's see. I think that I think we caught. I think we finally caught up on all the questions. <laughs> so talk to me. I guess the last thing is. I mean, so you're not a pilot yet. You talked like you might. You might be doing that soon, but you do have glider time, which is super cool. You've got a bunch of cool experiences with your dad um, flying for you, and now you guys are kind of partnering on this this business. Would you, I mean, if there was, how, 
I'm trying to think of how to ask the question. Like, if you had to do, well, let me ask you this: If you had to do anything else, like you're going down the DP road right now, if you were, do, if Christina was doing anything else with her life right now, what would it be? Yeah, I mean, I really would want to be a pilot, and I considered it many times. But when I was in doing some of the pilot training, I definitely got overwhelmed by it pretty quickly, um, and that sort of fell to the side for a while, especially in gliders. Gliders stress me out a lot. And my dad knows that. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I definitely considered at many points, um, and I still would love to do it uh, if the DP thing never worked out, for sure. It's it's kind of a similar lifestyle in that it's like you work when you work, and then when you're not right. working, you're not working, which I really enjoy. Um, so that and then traveling, obviously. But yeah, pilot, probably. <laughs> Rock on. Okay, now they've a- they're asking more uh more questions. I think maybe this is your dad. It's his dad thinks it's super fun too. Is that your dad? GD flies. That is my dad. Yeah. Hey dad. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> uh, yeah, He's been up for like 24 hours. I'm surprised he's watching this. <laughs> go take a nap, dad. Go take a nap. Uh, <laughs> folks, walk shot pilot. I can ask that question for you, but I need a little more. He's asking about costs, but are you ask what there's a lot of costs we could talk about. Are you talking about like, I think if you want, I think if you want Christina to come out and film you, she could put a bid together. I'll help her put a bid together. <laughs> I want to insert myself. I want to insert myself into this. I will help you put a bid together. Um, but uh, I mean, obviously, like none of this is cheap. Like gimbals aren't cheap. You've got an Amira, which is like a super expensive camera. You were telling me before the show. Even the um, the pockets. Actually, the Pocket Six K is a remarkable value. Uh, it's really crazy. I think the only one on there so far is the most recent one I've done, which is the Globe Swift, which it performed very well. I was surprised at how good it looks. Yeah, that's kind of a frust. That's one of those uh, those cameras that's frustrating because it's like I I will have I've got a friend who's shooting. Uh, he does a lot of like uh, motocross and cycling work, and he used to shoot on Reds, and then mm-hmm. he just sold all those and and bought um pocket 6 case because they worked better for what he was doing i think he's still got one red because you know sometimes people ask to because red, it. yeah sorry uh oh we got it we went into camera nerd camera nerdville um well before we sign off for the night i guess what i want to do is i want to play a game but it's normally like a pilot game so i'm just gonna like it's we can we're, i'm gonna try to ask you some camera questions too are you into it and that works. Yeah. All right. It's time for short final. Short final for folks at home. If you don't know, it's just a minute on the clock. I'm going to ask a bunch of questions to, to Christina Delp about, well, her flying experiences and her director of photography experiences. And we'll see if she can win. No pressure. No pressure. You've already won, though. There's no points. It's fine. Nice. Oh, wait, wait. A question came in. Sorry, we're going to divert. We're going to divert. Gary Smith says, have you done any national or regional commercials that we may have seen? Not yet, unfortunately. But hopefully that's uh, in the next few years. That's the goal. But there is there is stuff on your site that people in the area may have seen, like more on the East Coast, right? There's stuff. Yeah, the uh, the Randolph one never was like on TV, but it's been on their like social media and stuff like that. Randolph Engineering rock on so that's the thing that's the thing for sure um that's that's always a hard thing too right you're like oh yeah i make tv commercials and then people are like well tell me what what it is and i'm and i'm always like oh it's like the children's hospital really yeah in wisconsin <laughs> which i'm proud of but like it's you know unless you're around here all right let's play short final what a diversion that was thank you for the question though gary all right i'm gonna throw some music on where is it there we go all right, Christina Delp, favorite airport you and your dad have ever landed at? Um, probably, I think it's called Whitehorse in Yukon, Canada. It was on the way home from Alaska. It was really awesome. Awesome. Favorite lenses? Lenses. I just bought a set of Canon FDs that I'm a big fan of. Awesome. Uh, what about favorite camera system? I know I already know the answer to this. 
Yeah, it's, it's airy. I enjoy my mirror a lot. Luxa Mini, those sort of setups. Favorite Warbird? Warbird. Probably the... I guess the B-29. It's a big one. It's a big one. There's a guy in the chat right now that flies it. Okay, uh, last but not least, favorite photo mission you've done? Favorite photo mission. Or filming um, mission, I guess. Yeah. I'm going to have to say the, the jet prop. It's my favorite looking one, so that was fun. Yeah, it looks epic. It looks super epic. I mean, they all look super epic, but that one... Or the New York City that one. one. That's, a, that's a favorite of a lot of people, the New York City one. Was that is that the is that the twin? The Seneca, yeah. Oh, it's, see, I didn't even know which one it was. You out, you out, aviation nerded the aviation nerd here. Uh, Nathan Ballard, thanks for showing up super late, but thanks for making the show, Christina. Before we sign off, I just wanted to say thank you so much for hopping on the show tonight. It is super inspiring. To, I mean, I just want to look at it one more time before we sign off. Like this is such beautiful work that you're doing. And I'm so excited to see what you do in your career as kind of a up and coming DP. And I hope that uh, who knows, maybe we'll get to work together. But if nothing else, I just hope that you get to uh, to flex this air to air muscle a little bit more because it's it's super epic work. Oh, Canyon K wants to know what's your favorite YouTube channel. It's my favorite YouTube channel. I don't know. I really don't watch that much YouTube specifically, like channel-wise. It's more of just like looking up random camera stuff or things I need to set up at work, basically. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's fair. That's fair. I don't know how many times I've, I've watched uh, random wannabe cinematographers to learn how to set up my Sony. So. Yeah. I get it. Sony get menus it. are a beast. So. It's the worst. Uh. <laughs> Christina, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. I hope we run into you soon. If you guys really, seriously, if you want to work with Christina on something, uh, shoot me a note on Instagram or shoot her a note on Instagram, and I'll we'll get everyone connected and maybe we can get something going on. Uh, yeah, thanks so much, and uh, yeah. everybody. Thanks for having me on. Oh, sorry, I accidentally hit the button. You know, that was very rude of me. <laughs> yeah, just thanks for having me on. This was a lot of fun talking about it to people who would enjoy it. Yeah, dude, we all love it. We all love it. We could just I I could do a live stream with just your footage playing all hour with <laughs> nothing else and everyone would watch it anyway. <laughs> all right, everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in on another awesome Wednesday night talking about airplanes. Uh, I wanted to give a quick shout out. Uh, I'm actually hopping on a plane myself tomorrow to go down to Jennings, Louisiana for Swamp Stole. It's going to be the next uh, stop on the Husky National Stole Series, you know, competition series, uh, short takeoff and landings. And so I know the pilots are all, all arriving today already. They've got practice tomorrow and the competition kicks off Friday and Saturday. Uh, keep it tabs on my social accounts and the National Husky National Stole social accounts. You can see a live stream. We'll do a live stream down there. I am really looking forward to it, except for the fact that it is going to be hot I'm going to have to drink a lot of water, <laughs> but, but it's going to be cool. We're hoping for some great weather and some great uh, great competition down there. So check that out. And if you're in Louisiana, you're in Jennings, uh, when I'm not in the booth, uh, come say hi. I would love to meet you. So anyway, everybody, thank you so much for uh, watching. We'll see you next week. We're actually going to talk about Stoll next week. We're going to talk about the competition this week, next week, and uh, have one of the competitors on to talk about what goes into being a national stole pilot or just a stole competitor. So anyway, thank you, everybody. Thanks again to Christina for being on the show tonight. We will see you soon.